All right, this is rolling resistance. So if you have a rigid surface with a cylinder on top, you have the weight of that cylinder acting at the center, 0, 0.0, and then the normal force is going to act um, just right below it, perpendicular to the surface of contact. But what if the surface was not completely rigid? You still had your cylinder with your weight. This time, you're going to get a normal force that's distributed along the surface, such that it looks more like this. So over here, we call it the deformation. So that's ND. And over here, we have the normal force of restoration. So, as a cylinder rolls, the surface material in front of the surface retards the motion since it is being deformed, whereas as the material in the rear is restored from the deformed state, it tends to push the cylinder such that ND is always going to be greater than NR. So if we were to look at this in a simplified form, we would have our cylinder with weight and P, which is the force necessary to overcome this rolling resistance. And then over here at point A, our normal force would act. And our normal force is the combination of the deformation and the restoration. And that angle right there is angle theta. And this distance from A to the center of the cylinder is called a little a. Such that if we were to take the moment and sum it about point A, right there, we would get uh, negative w a that's going clockwise, plus P times the radius R times cosine of theta, such that P would be equal to WA over R, because theta is very, very small. Sorry. Such that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 and A is equal to the coefficient of rolling resistance. And your rolling resistance, WA over R, is always going to be less than mu K times your weight or your normal force, which allows a cylinder to roll before they slide. Which is why rollers and ball bearings are used to minimize frictional resistance. Oops, excuse me.